In this video, we'll be tying rebar using my favorite style of tie. Hey guys, welcome back or to the channel. We're doing the rebar right now. We tamped it down using my, uh, well, my gas tamper. This is the old beast of a unit. Never painted this, I should have painted this. I wanted to originally paint it red, but uh, never got around to it. Anyways, it's been working amazingly well. Since this is a patio, there'll be 24 inch centers. Uh, if it was a driveway, it'd be 18 inch centers. Um, we want to stay about 15 inches off of the sides of the the forms. Um, I might pick go. I might go a little closer. Now this is a six inch uh, patio. If it was four inches, you wouldn't have to worry about rebar. You put a wire mesh. But I want to be a bit more structural since I'm going to be putting concrete stairs on the top of this. So I'm going to basically do this 18 inch centers and away we'll go. Um, the tie joint that I'm going to be using is a U type style, which I will demonstrate. Um, basically, when you put the rebar going across, you tie both of those ends together. So, anyway, I'll, I'll demonstrate. The concrete slab we're going to pour is 6 inches thick. It's 12 feet long by 8 feet wide, and our rebar is 10 feet long, so it gives us 12 inches at the beginning and at the end for spacing in between the uh, forming wood. Now, that being said, I am cutting the rebar in half and uh, tying them to create our grid pattern. And I'll be tying them at 18 inches and then 16 inches wide. And that's typical for our driveway, but I wanted extra integrity for this uh, grid style work. Now, I'm tying them all up and I have a U-style saddle tie where I tie it diagonally for the intersecting rebar and then I wrap it on again the other side. Now, I'm going to physically show you now. So, we lift up the rebar in the grid pattern and I'm double checking to make sure that it is 18 inches center and once we have that measurement we will start and begin the tie. Now typically I just grab an approximation of the um, metal and it's about uh, 12 to 16 inches in length and there's quite the discrepancy in the length but then I just wrap up any of the excess. So we're starting off and wrapping it around and then we tie it and then we go back around the other way and then we tie it again and then the excess wire is then wrapped up together as you see here and what we'll do with that is at the end after we've done tying it up we'll wrap it around the rebar itself now I'm going to demonstrate this one more time and then we'll just go back to finishing off the entire grid pattern of rebar for the concrete pour. As you see here, I'll wrap the rest of that just around the rebar, securing everything into place. Now on for the second showing. Just get into position, and then we'll do the second one. So right here, once again, we are double checking our measurement. You don't need to do this, but I want to make sure that my measurements were as close to what I wanted. And then now we just snip off that 12 inches approximately to 16 inches of wire. So now we start it off going underneath, and then we make sure it's both equal lengths. Then we do our first tie, flip around the opposite direction. So diagonal one way, diagonal the next way. Wrap, we lift up the rebar, wrap it around, and then Whatever the remainder is, we do the first tie and then start tying all the way up and through. And that completes our rebar U slash saddle hybrid tying. It's my favorite way to do it. And it's structurally strong so that when you want to pick up the entire rebar grid that we just made, you can do so and it won't deform, change, or anything of that shape. It's quite awesome and it's never failed me. And then we're gonna take this and go right across the entire thing. We'll be double checking all of our measurements all the way through to make sure that everything stays at 18 inches, going from the beginning to the end. And then from side to side, there'll be about 16 inches. So left to right or right to left, depending on how you're looking at it. And that will be our grid pattern. Now we have one more piece of rebar to cut. 
to fill in that last little bit there. And then I'm trying to figure out where I'm going to put it. And I decided to throw it into that diagonal piece where the steps are going to be in the future. We won't be pouring those, but we're going to be pouring the slab itself. Okay, so we have 18 inch centers, 16 inch centers. As you can see right through here, I just had a little piece of rebar to throw there, so I just tied it on down. Close up, these are what the, uh, the U wrap looks like. Um, go one side, twist, go to the other side, twist, and twist it all together. That's as easy as it is. As difficult as it can be, again, I'm 12 inches off the end of this. 15 inches is recommended, 12 inches off here. There you got lots of space, but I'm gonna put a set of stairs in this area next year, so it's not really a big deal. Um, again, I'm gonna build a wall here, but that's gonna happen next year. I just wanna get the patio down, and that way I can actually do the stairs. Now the stairs should come to about here, so that gives you another, this is 12 feet, so the stairs will be about six feet, so again, you have another six feet for the, the uh, landing, and that's awesome. Uh, so when you get out of your vehicle, you come out, you step here, you go upstairs, which is awesome. Um, these are, I got these from a mall way back in the day. Um, I don't know what mall, uh, it was one that I was working on. This was when I was in, you know what? I can't even remember, that doesn't really matter. Um, I just had a story and, I, and then it was gone. I do have to fix all the blocking here. I had somebody uh, come and talk to me about that when they delivered all the gravel. He's like, don't worry about ripping this off which is what I wanted to do. We do this all to ne tomorrow, uh, next year. He said, just fix this, you'll be good to go. So I'm gonna tend to lean towards that. It means a little bit less work for me. And then I can always get somebody in to professionally uh, coat this with a, like a kind of like a rubber kind of, um, well, basically it would protect this. It's like stamped concrete. Now I want, um, what call it, uh, limestone brick going across here. Mom says no to that, so we'll see what happens. This is an example of what I would like. However, I still have to get the boss to say yes. Um, and this is kind of just basically in the centered position. When I go to pour this, I'm going to do it in two parts before I add this. Um, I'll do it two inches to approximately three, and then I'll drop this down as I'm doing the concrete pour tomorrow, because I'll be mixing with this old beast. Hopefully she lasts. Um, I'll place this down on top after the three inches approximately, and then I'll pour the rest of it and smooth it all out. All the concrete's here underneath the uh, tarps. Hopefully it didn't get too wet. And then we have the patio that I did a little bit earlier. I'm gonna get four more stones for the end there. Um, but I'm just gonna go with a normal finish like I did earlier this year, which was this patio here. Turned out really good. Let's talk about repairing the center block wall once more. Kinda wanna go in a bit more detail. I'll talk about was the block. Now I had somebody who delivered the three quarters crush right over here tell me that I can just replace this stuff. I've never done it before. I've never done any block work before. Um, at least to the best of my memory. So basically you got to chisel what, what's here and as you can see it's uh, pretty bad. It actually looks like something is living in there. I don't know what. But that being said all this is being pushed out. You can see the crack here. That's because it's coming this way. We don't really want that. Now I was going to replace it like I told him. And he said, no, man, just uh, chisel out what you need to and then uh, place in the blocks, use cement and everything, re uh, fix it a little better. And you'll be good, golden, parge it, and that's it. And then all you have to do on top of this would be stamp concrete. Now, originally, I wanted to get rid of this, this block here. So you'd be come down one step off there and then a second step and then a third step. And then you'll be onto the main patio here. I may or may not do that. Now, in the meantime, I might just make a cool video about this and uh, fix the blocking and that way next year I can decide what I'm going to do about this. Now this is because of salt that was not made specifically to be uh, in the winter time for this style of concrete. Plus these are second end blocks. Um, they're a little bit le cheaper and they should never been used in this application. That being said, they were used, the house is over 35 years old and they are deteriorated. Um, behind this wood piece here is even worse. So this is kind of on borrowed time. So I want to fix this this side and then I'll fix that side. And that'll be it for the concrete work for this year. So tomorrow, if weather prevails, I'll be lifting this out, laying in the concrete pad up to about two to three inches. And then I'll put this in the middle and then we'll be finishing off the rest of the concrete 
and uh, that'll be that. Hopefully that mixer again lasts. It's quite old and hopefully my concrete isn't wet. I just tarped everything off as you can see there. So tomorrow is concrete day. This should be fun. So thanks for watching guys. If you made this far in the video, please like, share, and subscribe. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, leave them down below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Hope you like the video and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace. Since you're still here, I decided to go and grab the stones and this is the extending of the walkway. Um, pretty easy to, to uh, lay out your concrete slabs and just level it out as you go. I'm doing a quick little level here. It doesn't really matter to me because this whole walkway here is just temporary for the winter time. So I have something to shovel and something to walk on. Keep it all safe. You can hear the rain in the distance, but the patio is now in. Now this part here, I'm gonna do in concrete to have it ramp up so that when I'm going up with my John Deere tractor, so it'll come up here and then nicely ramp up. I'm not gonna do it this year, it'll be next year. But this area will be how I bring my ATVs into the back of the house. So yeah, that's it.